The art of critical thinking. Stay calm, think clearly, and win every time. Written by Justice O. Malcolm. Published by Audio Books Office. Introduction. In the chaos of life, it's easy to lose your center. Stress, noise, and uncertainty can cloud your mind, pushing you into reactive decisions that feel rushed and emotional. But the true power of critical thinking lies in your ability to remain calm, especially when everything around you feels like it's spinning out of control. When you stay calm, you open the door to clear thinking, deeper insights, and solutions that others can't see. Mastering the art of critical thinking is about learning to pause, reflect, and respond, not react in any situation. The mind, when clouded by stress or urgency, cannot think clearly. It clings to old patterns, emotional biases, and quick fixes. But the most powerful decisions come from a place of stillness, where you can observe the bigger picture without the noise of emotions or pressure. Staying calm doesn't mean ignoring the intensity of the moment, it means owning it. It means stepping into that intensity with confidence, knowing that your calm state is where true clarity and wisdom emerge. In every challenge, your first victory is the ability to control your mind. When you are calm, you can think critically, analyze situations from multiple angles, and avoid being swept away by the momentum of fear or doubt. This is how you win, not just occasionally, but every time by maintaining your inner composure and making decisions from a place of clarity rather than confusion. Critical thinking is an art, and at its core is the ability to sift through complexity without being overwhelmed. The calm mind is a sharp mind. It sees connections, anticipates obstacles, and identifies opportunities that others miss. When others are caught in the trap of emotional decision-making, you remain focused and intentional. It's not just about being rational, it's about being strategic knowing that the clearest solution often requires the patience to stay calm in the face of pressure. This book is a guide to mastering the art of critical thinking, where calmness is your foundation and clear thought is your tool. You will learn how to approach any situation, no matter how complicated or tense, with the clarity and composure needed to find the best solution. With each chapter, you will gain the tools to think more effectively, make better decisions, and turn every challenge into an opportunity for success. Stay calm, think clearly, and watch as your life transforms into a series of strategic victories. Your mind is your greatest asset. Let's train it to win. Imagine you're in a high-pressure situation, your pulse is quickening and your mind is racing. How can you keep calm and think critically to make a sound decision? It's not as challenging as you might think. By understanding and applying a few key techniques, you can master the art of critical thinking. Let's explore how to identify biases, focus on facts over emotions, and ask the right questions. And remember, the best part is yet to come. For more information about the ebook version of this audio, Check the video description or visit audiobooksoffice.com. We notice that 69% of you who listen to our video are not yet subscribed to the channel. Please help support the channel by hitting the subscribe button and liking the video. Thanks for inspiring us to create more content for you. Chapter 1. Define Critical Thinking Clearly Every single one of us engages in critical thinking daily, but have you ever stopped to clearly define what it means? Simply put, critical thinking is the ability to analyze, evaluate, and form judgments based on the information at hand. It's a fundamental skill used to make sound decisions and solve problems effectively. Your brain is in a constant state of gathering, interpreting, and analyzing information. When you're using critical thinking, you're intentionally directing this process to reach well-reasoned conclusions. It's not about accepting information at face value or making snap judgments, but rather about dissecting information to understand its origins, implications, and validity. Critical thinking involves several key elements. First, it requires active engagement. You're not passively absorbing information, you're questioning it, probing it, challenging it. Next, 
it requires a level of skepticism. You don't immediately accept or reject information, but rather suspend judgment until you've thoroughly examined it. Finally, it requires self-awareness. You must recognize your own biases and assumptions, understand how they might be influencing your thinking, and aim to minimize their impact. Mastering critical thinking isn't about becoming a cynic or a contrarian. It's about becoming a more discerning consumer of information, a more effective problem solver, and a better decision maker. It's about using your brain to its fullest potential so you can navigate the world with clarity, confidence, and discernment. Chapter 2. Identify Biases and Assumptions Mastering critical thinking necessitates an honest look at your own biases and assumptions. You've got to peel back the layers of your thought patterns, inspecting them for hidden biases that might cloud your judgment. It's not an easy task, but it's a crucial one. Biases, both conscious and unconscious, are preconceived notions that can hinder clear thinking. They often arise from societal influences, personal experiences, or even innate tendencies. It's important to understand that everyone has biases. They're part of being human. Your job isn't to eradicate them, but to recognize them, understand their origins, and consider how they might affect your decision-making process. Assumptions, on the other hand, are beliefs or ideas taken for granted without verification. They can be subtle, worming their way into your thought process without you even realizing it. To uncover your assumptions, it's helpful to regularly question your beliefs. Ask yourself, why do I think this? What evidence do I have to support it? This self-interrogation can expose hidden assumptions and help you evaluate their validity. Identifying your biases and assumptions isn't a one-time exercise, but an ongoing practice. It's about maintaining a state of self-awareness and constantly questioning your thought patterns. Remember, the goal isn't to achieve perfect objectivity that's an impossible task. Instead, aim for a mindset that's open, curious, and willing to challenge its own preconceptions. This is the essence of critical thinking. By mastering this art, you'll be better equipped to stay calm, think clearly, and win every time. Chapter 3 Stay calm under pressure. Under the weight of pressure, it's not uncommon to find your thoughts racing and your pulse quickening. But this is the exact moment when you need to stay calm. You might ask, how can I keep calm when the stakes are high and everything is on the line? Firstly, recognize the signs. Your body sends you signals when you're under pressure. A fast heartbeat, quick breaths, sweaty palms. Don't ignore these signals instead. Use them to trigger your calm response. Take a deep breath, hold it for a few seconds, and then exhale slowly. This technique helps to slow your heart rate and calm your mind. Secondly, practice mindfulness. It's about being present in the moment and not letting your mind wander. By focusing on the here and now, you're less likely to worry about what could go wrong. And remember, it's not about eliminating stress, but managing it. Thirdly, take a step back. Sometimes the best way to handle pressure is to distance yourself from it. This doesn't mean avoiding the situation, but rather gaining a fresh perspective. By looking at the big picture, you can understand the source of the pressure and find ways to mitigate it. Lastly, have a plan. When you're under pressure, your thinking can become clouded. But if you have a well-thought-out plan, you'll know exactly what to do. This is where critical thinking comes into play. Staying calm under pressure isn't easy, but it's a skill that can be learned. Chapter 4. Focus on facts, not emotions. Building on the idea of staying calm under pressure. Focusing on facts rather than emotions can greatly enhance your ability to handle stress. When a situation arises that triggers your emotions, you might find your thoughts becoming clouded or irrational. This is where the art of critical thinking comes in. Crucial to sift through these emotions and find the underlying facts. 
Emotions are powerful and can quickly cloud judgment. Your first reaction might be to respond emotionally, but that's when you need to take a step back. Instead of reacting, you're going to analyze. What are the facts? What's really happening, independent of your emotional response? This requires discipline, but it's a skill you can develop. Let's say you're given feedback at work that you didn't expect or agree with. Emotionally, you might feel attacked or defensive, but pause and consider the facts. What was the exact feedback? Was it based on specific incidents or behaviors? Chapter 5. Ask the right questions. Digging deeper into the situation often involves asking the right questions. You've got to probe, dissect, and analyze to get to the heart of the matter. So what does it mean to ask the right questions in the context of critical thinking? Firstly, you must understand that asking the right questions isn't about seeking easy answers. It's about seeking truth, understanding, and clarity. It's about removing assumptions, biases, and preconceived notions from your thought process. This is where open-ended questions come into play. Instead of asking questions that can be answered with a simple yes or no, pose questions that call for deeper thought and elaboration. Also, consider the context and the perspective of other individuals involved. Ask yourself, what is the underlying issue here, or what are the possible different perspectives on this situation? These questions allow you to see the bigger picture and consider multiple viewpoints, thereby enhancing your critical thinking skills. Remember, the quality of your questions determines the quality of your thinking. So aim to ask insightful, thought-provoking questions that challenge you and others to think more deeply and critically about the situation at hand. By doing so, you'll be better equipped to stay calm, think clearly, and win every time. In essence, asking the right questions is a fundamental tool in your critical thinking toolkit. It's a key step towards becoming a more effective, objective, and insightful thinker. So don't shy away from the tough questions, embrace them. They're your stepping stones to greater understanding and clearer thinking. Chapter 6. Avoid Emotional Decision-Making Moving from asking the right questions, another way to maintain composure and clarity of thought is by steering clear of emotional decision-making. It's natural to be swayed by your emotions, but they can obscure your judgment and lead to impulsive decisions. Consider a situation where you're feeling particularly stressed or upset. You're more likely to make decisions that are reactionary rather than being based on a calm, rational thought process. These decisions can often lead to regret or further complications down the line. To avoid this, it's vital to recognize when your emotions are starting to take control. This could be a physical reaction, such as a racing heart or flushed cheeks, or a mental one, like feeling overwhelmed or anxious. Once you've identified these signs, take a step back. Give yourself time to calm down and gather your thoughts before making a decision. Furthermore, try to separate your emotions from the issue at hand. This doesn't mean ignoring your feelings, but consider them as one part of a larger picture. Analyze the situation objectively and weigh the pros and cons of each option. Ask yourself, am I making this decision based on my emotions, or is it the best choice given the circumstances? Chapter 7. Practice Active Listening In the quest for calm, the art of active listening serves as a powerful tool. It's more than just hearing the words that are being said. It involves understanding the speaker's intentions, feelings, and thoughts, which can often be hidden within their words. It's about being present and focused, showing empathy and understanding without judgment. Active listening is a two-way street. You're not just passively receiving information, you're also giving feedback. This feedback doesn't necessarily need to be verbal. Even simple nods and appropriate facial expressions can indicate that you're understanding and engaging with the speaker's words. One practical technique for active listening is the reflect and clarify method. After a person shares their thoughts, you reflect back what you've heard to confirm your comprehension. If you've misunderstood something, 
the speaker has an opportunity to clarify. This process guarantees that everyone is on the same page and it can prevent misunderstandings from escalating into conflicts. Active listening also requires patience. Resist the urge to interrupt or impose your thoughts on the speaker. You'll get your turn to talk, but right now your job is to listen. Stay calm, keep your emotions in check, and focus on understanding the other person's perspective. Chapter 8 Analyze Information Objectively Analyzing information objectively is a key skill, especially when you're trying to maintain calm in a tense situation. This process involves setting aside personal biases, opinions, and emotions to focus solely on the facts. This doesn't mean you're cold or detached, just that you're thoughtful and clear-headed, which is exactly what you need. The first step is to gather all the relevant information in front of you. Consider every piece of data, even those that might seem insignificant at first glance. It's easy to overlook something pivotal when you're not looking at the whole picture. Next, take a moment to think about what you've collected. What does it all mean? What stands out? What connections can you make? Don't rush this stage. Good analysis takes time and careful consideration. Then, identify any assumptions or biases that might be influencing your interpretation. Remember, you're aiming for objectivity, so you need to be honest with yourself about any prejudices that might be coloring your view. Finally, make your conclusions based on the information and your analysis. Remember to keep an open mind. If the data doesn't support your initial hypothesis, that's okay. Your goal isn't to be right, it's to understand. Chapter 9 Evaluate Information Sources Having gathered and analyzed your information objectively, it's equally important to scrutinize the sources from which this information is derived. The credibility, reliability, and validity of your sources greatly impact the strength of your critical thinking process. Start by checking the author's qualifications and background. Is the author an expert in the field? What's their level of education, experience, and reputation within the field? These factors can provide valuable insights into the credibility of the source. Next, consider the source's objectivity. Does it exhibit any bias? Remember, a source that shows clear signs of bias may distort the truth, leading you to form a skewed perspective. Crucially, gauge the source's neutrality, ensuring that it presents a balanced view of the topic. The publication date also matters. Particularly in fast-evolving fields, outdated sources may provide irrelevant or even incorrect information. Always aim for the most current and relevant information to maintain the accuracy and relevance of your critical thinking process. Lastly, cross-reference the information from your source with other credible sources. If the information is consistent across multiple sources, it's likely to be reliable. However, if there are discrepancies, you'll need to dig deeper and evaluate further. Chapter 10. Identify logical fallacies. Spotting logical fallacies isn't always easy, but it's a crucial step in strengthening your thinking skills. A logical fallacy is an error in reasoning that undermines the logic of your argument. They can be intentional, used to manipulate or persuade, or unintentional simply resulting from poor reasoning. You must be well-versed in recognizing different types of fallacies. To start, there's the straw man fallacy, where someone distorts or exaggerates another's argument to make it easier to attack. Be watchful. Don't allow your argument to be misrepresented or conversely, don't misrepresent others. Another common trap is the ad hominem fallacy where the person making the argument is attacked instead of their argument. Remember, an argument's validity is independent of the person making it. Discredit the argument, not the arguer. The appeal to authority fallacy is another one to look out for. Just because an expert says so, doesn't mean it's always correct. Experts can be wrong, and it's your job to question the validity of their arguments, regardless of their authority. Lastly, 
Be wary of the false cause fallacy, where a cause-effect relationship is assumed without enough evidence. Correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation. Challenge these assumptions and look for concrete evidence. Mastering the identification of these logical fallacies will sharpen your critical thinking skills. It's not about winning an argument, it's about seeking truth and clarity. Chapter 11. Stay open to new ideas. Traversing through the world of ideas, it's essential for you to remain open-minded. Open-mindedness is a critical component in the art of critical thinking. It's not about accepting every idea thrown at you, but rather it's about giving every idea a fair chance. Imagine your mind as a marketplace of ideas, where each idea competes for acceptance and survives based on its merits. As a critical thinker, it's your responsibility to be a good marketplace manager. You can't simply reject an idea because it's new or different. Instead, you have to analyze its merits, evaluate its pros and cons, and then make an informed decision. Why is this important? Because new ideas are the lifeblood of progress and innovation. They challenge the status quo, push boundaries, and often lead to better ways of doing things. However, new ideas can also be unsettling, as they force us to reconsider our preconceived notions and potentially change our beliefs. So how can you stay open to new ideas without getting overwhelmed or losing your critical edge? First, don't let initial resistance or discomfort stop you from exploring an idea. Second, actively seek out different perspectives, as this can broaden your understanding and expose you to ideas you wouldn't encounter otherwise. Finally, remind yourself that it's okay to change your mind. In fact, it's a sign of growth. Chapter 12. Challenge your own beliefs. In the journey of critical thinking, it's crucial to challenge your own beliefs. This might seem intimidating, but it's a pivotal step to broaden your understanding and make decisions objectively. It's about questioning the ingrained ideas and assumptions you've held over time to test their validity. To start, you need to identify your beliefs. Think about the opinions and values that guide your actions and judgments they might be about politics, religion, or social issues. It's important to remember that these beliefs aren't inherently right or wrong, they're just perspectives shaped by personal experiences and environments. Next, dissect these beliefs. Ask yourself why you hold them. Are they based on facts or emotions? Have you adopted them from family, friends, or media? By recognizing the origins of your beliefs, you can evaluate their credibility. Then, test your beliefs against evidence. It's easy to find information that supports your views, but it's the contradictory evidence that's often overlooked. Don't shy away from the uncomfortable. Seek out opposing arguments and weigh them against your beliefs. You'll find that some of your beliefs stand strong, while others may need reevaluation. Challenging your beliefs isn't about discarding them altogether. Rather, it's a process of refining them, of ensuring they're based on reason and evidence. It's about holding beliefs that you've consciously chosen, not ones you've blindly accepted. Chapter 13. Consider alternative perspectives. Embracing other perspectives is a pivotal part of critical thinking. It's not just about accepting that there are different viewpoints, it's about actively seeking them out, understanding them, and weighing them against your own. This isn't always easy, but it's an essential step towards making balanced, informed decisions. Don't be afraid to put yourself in someone else's shoes. It's easy to dismiss opposing arguments when you're entrenched in your own viewpoint, but stop for a moment and consider the other side. Ask yourself, why might someone hold this opinion or what experiences could have led them to this belief this doesn't mean you must agree with them, but understanding where they're coming from can shed new light on your own perspective. Also, be open to the possibility that you might be wrong. It's a tough pill to swallow, but no one is right all the time. Recognizing that you could be mistaken doesn't make you weak or naive. It makes you adaptable and open-minded. It's a sign of strength and maturity. 
Finally, actively seek out diverse sources of information. Don't just stick to your regular news sites or social media feeds go beyond your comfort zone. Read articles from publications with varying viewpoints. Listen to podcasts that challenge your beliefs and engage with people who think differently than you do. This won't only broaden your perspective, but also sharpen your critical thinking skills. Chapter 14. Create a mindset that is open to growth. While considering alternative perspectives can broaden your viewpoint, fostering a mindset open to growth is what truly drives personal and intellectual evolution. It's not simply about acquiring new knowledge or skills, but about reshaping your thought processes and attitudes. You're not a static being. Your mind isn't a vessel to be filled, but a fire to be kindled. When you adopt a growth mindset, you see yourself as a work in progress. You understand that your abilities and intelligence can be developed. You embrace challenges, persist in the face of setbacks, see effort as a path to mastery, learn from criticism, and find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. In contrast, a fixed mindset holds you back. It convinces you that your abilities are innate and unchangeable, leading to a desire to look smart and avoid challenges. When you believe your qualities are carved in stone, failure becomes terrifying, a permanent stamp on your abilities. In the domain of critical thinking, an open mindset is paramount. It allows you to question assumptions, challenge status quo, and seek innovative solutions. It's not about being right all the time, but about constantly learning and improving. In the end, it's your choice. You can stick with comfort and predictability, or you can embrace growth and the uncertainty that comes with it. Remember, the road to personal evolution isn't always comfortable, but it's the only path that leads to true intellectual growth. Chapter 15. Cultivate Self-Awareness. Cultivating self-awareness is a pivotal step on your path to personal growth. Self-awareness is your intrinsic ability to understand your thoughts, emotions, strengths, weaknesses, and behaviors. It's an essential tool for critical thinking because it allows you to comprehend your own biases, assumptions, and mental paradigms. How do you cultivate self-awareness? Start by analyzing your emotions, Emotions can cloud your judgment and distort your perspective. When you're aware of your emotional state, you can manage it effectively, consequently enhancing your critical thinking ability. You can use techniques such as mindfulness or meditation to bring attention to your emotions without judgment. Understanding your strengths and weaknesses is another key aspect of self-awareness. Knowing your strengths can boost your self-confidence while understanding your weaknesses allows you to mitigate them. This self-knowledge empowers you to make informed decisions and exercise sound judgment. Observing your behaviors is equally important. Your actions often reflect your thought patterns, and being aware of this can help you identify any cognitive biases that might be hindering your critical thinking. Finally, self-awareness involves recognizing your values and beliefs. These are the frameworks through which you perceive and interpret the world. Chapter 16. Reflect on your thought process. Reflection on your thought process is an integral part of enhancing self-awareness and improving critical thinking skills. It's not enough to just think you need to understand how you think. By introspecting and examining the gears that turn in your mental machine, you can better comprehend the way you tackle problems, make decisions, and form opinions. Start by acknowledging that your thoughts aren't always logical or unbiased. Your mind, like anyone's, can be swayed by emotions, preconceptions, and misunderstandings. It's okay. The key is to identify these influences and consider how they might be steering your thoughts. Next, trace the steps of your thinking. What sparked your initial thought? How did it evolve? What information did you use? And how did you interpret it? This mental audit can reveal patterns and habits in your thinking process. It can show you where you tend to rush, where you linger, and where you leap to conclusions. Finally, evaluate your thought process. Was it effective? 
Did it lead to a reasonable conclusion, decision, or solution? If not, what went wrong? And more importantly, what can you do differently next time? This self-critique isn't about beating yourself up. It's about learning, growing, and fine-tuning your thinking skills. Chapter 17. Stay focused on the issue. After mastering the art of self-awareness and understanding your thought processes, you'll find that maintaining focus on the issue at hand becomes much easier. Vital to stay attentive to the topic being discussed or analyzed and not let your mind wander to unrelated areas. This focus is what enables you to explore further into the issue, critically evaluate it, and ultimately make informed decisions. When you're in a discussion or faced with a problem, it's easy to get sidetracked by secondary issues or emotionally charged tangents. This is where your ability to stay focused on the core issue becomes pivotal. You need to sift through the noise, identify what's truly important, and direct your mental energy towards that. So how do you maintain this focus? Start by clearly defining the issue. What's the main question or problem you're trying to address? Having a clear definition provides a frame for your thoughts, helping you to stay on track. Next, consciously direct your attention towards that main issue. This might require you to remind yourself, this is the issue I'm focusing on whenever your mind starts to wander. Finally, if you find yourself getting sidetracked, don't panic. Gently guide your thoughts back to the main issue. Remember, the goal here isn't to suppress other thoughts, but to prioritize and focus on the matter at hand. Staying focused on the issue is a key aspect of critical thinking. It allows you to explore further into the matter, analyze it objectively, and come up with insightful conclusions. Chapter 18. Manage Information Overload In today's digital age, you're often bombarded with an overwhelming amount of information. It's like standing in front of a fire hose of data, where your senses are assaulted with relentless streams of incoming notifications, alerts, emails, and reports. As a result, you may find it increasingly difficult to stay calm and think clearly. But fear not. You can manage this information overload effectively using critical thinking skills. Firstly, it's important to understand that not all information is equally relevant or useful. Your first instinct might be to consume everything, but that's unproductive and exhausting. Instead, you need to discern what's pertinent to your needs and goals. This means you'll have to evaluate the source of the information, its reliability, and its relevance to your current situation or problem. Secondly, learn to categorize and prioritize. Once you've filtered out the noise, categorize the useful information based on its urgency or importance. Prioritizing helps you focus on dealing with the most vital items first, making the entire process more manageable. But, lastly, don't hesitate to disconnect when needed. It's okay to take a step back, put your devices on silent, or even go off the grid for a while. This respite allows your mind to rest, recharge, and ultimately think more clearly. Chapter 19. Use logic to solve problems. Amid the chaos of everyday life, it's easy to get tangled up in complex problems. When it feels like you're drowning in a sea of uncertainty, logic becomes your lifeline. Harnessing the power of logical reasoning isn't about being a genius or having a PhD. It's about applying a structured way of thinking that allows clarity to emerge from chaos. Logic, at its core, is about consistency and coherency. It's the ability to see connections, understand patterns, and predict outcomes based on information at hand. Your task, then is to cultivate this skill and use it to cut through the noise of any problem you face. Start by identifying the premise of your problem. What are the facts that you know to be true? Once you've gathered these, analyze them critically. Look for inconsistencies, contradictions, or gaps in your understanding. This process will help you to separate facts from assumptions and evidence from opinion. Next, draw conclusions based on your analysis. This is where your logical thinking really comes into play. 
Using the facts and evidence you've gathered, develop a hypothesis that logically follows. Remember, it's not about what you want to be true, but what the evidence suggests. Chapter 20. Develop a systematic approach. With a solid foundation in logical reasoning, you're now ready to develop a systematic approach to problem solving. This involves breaking down complex problems into smaller, manageable components. It's like dismantling a difficult puzzle piece by piece. You're not just tackling the problem head on, you're dissecting it, understanding its parts, and figuring out how those parts interconnect. First off, clearly define the problem. This step is vital. You can't solve a problem if you don't truly understand what it is. So take time to analyze it from all angles. Ask yourself what the root cause is. What's the effect? What are the potential solutions? By doing this, you're laying the groundwork for effective problem solving. Next, gather all relevant information. This supports informed decision making. Don't rush this step. You need to be thorough. After all, you're building a case for your solution. Remember, quality trumps quantity. It's not about how much data you have, but how relevant and reliable they are. Then, generate possible solutions. Brainstorm, don't limit yourself. Think outside the box. The best solution mightn't be the most obvious one. Weigh the pros and cons of each option. Be unbiased. This stage is about exploration, not judgment. Finally, pick a solution and act on it. Monitor the results. If it doesn't resolve the problem, don't panic. Stay calm, think clearly, and go back to your list of potential solutions. Apply another one. This systematic approach strengthens your critical thinking skills. It makes you a methodical problem solver, someone who can stay calm, think clearly, and win every time. Chapter 21. Practice Mindfulness Meditation. While a systematic approach substantially bolsters your problem-solving prowess, incorporating mindfulness meditation into your routine could further enhance your capacity to stay calm. It's not just a trendy buzzword mindfulness meditation has been proven to reduce stress, increase focus, and contribute to emotional stability all of which are essential components in the art of critical thinking. Mindfulness meditation involves focusing on your breath or a particular object and bringing your mind back to this focus whenever it wanders. This practice trains you to maintain focus on the task at hand, preventing distractions from clouding your judgment. You're not trying to empty your mind or achieve a state of eternal bliss. Instead, you're simply observing what's going on right now, without judgment. In the context of critical thinking, this means you're more likely to assess situations objectively, without being swayed by emotional reactions or preconceived notions. You're better able to analyze information, identify potential solutions, and make informed decisions. But remember, like any skill, mindfulness takes practice. Start with just a few minutes each day, gradually increasing the duration as your concentration improves. The key is consistency, even a brief daily practice, is more effective than an hour once a week. Chapter 22. Stay calm in high-stress situations. When the pressure ramps up, it becomes critical for your ability to think clearly to stay calm. High-stress situations can cloud your judgment, making it difficult to make the right decisions. But don't let that scare you, it's not an insurmountable hurdle. It's a skill, and like any other skill, it can be honed with practice and the right techniques. Firstly, recognize the signs of stress. It may manifest physically, such as increased heart rate or sweating, or mentally, like feeling overwhelmed or anxious. Recognizing these signs early on allows you to intervene before they escalate. One effective technique is controlled breathing. It's simple, yet often overlooked. When you sense stress building, take slow, deep breaths. This helps to slow your heart rate, reducing feelings of anxiety and helping you regain your calm. Visualization is another powerful tool. Picture a calming scene or remember a time when you felt completely at ease. This can help shift your brain away from the stress at hand, 
allowing you to refocus. Lastly, don't forget about the power of positive affirmation. Telling yourself that you can handle the situation can go a long way in actually making it happen. It's not just about fooling your mind, it's about reinforcing your self-belief. Chapter 23 Make informed decisions quickly. Mastering the art of staying calm under pressure naturally paves the way for another essential skill making informed decisions quickly. This skill doesn't just mean acting hastily, it's about promptly gathering the necessary information, analyzing it, and making a decision based on that analysis. To make informed decisions quickly, you'll need to stay focused. Distractions can cloud your judgment, so it's important to keep your attention on the task at hand. Gather all the necessary data and facts relevant to your decision. This could mean conducting research, speaking with experts, or simply taking a moment to reflect. Next, analyze the information you've gathered. Look for patterns, weigh the pros and cons, and consider the potential outcomes. You don't have to predict the future, but you do need a reasonable idea of what might happen based on your decision. Once you've analyzed the information, it's time to decide. Trust your analysis and make a decision. You won't always have all the information you'd like, and that's okay. The goal is to make the best decision possible given what you know. Finally, act on your decision. Remember, a decision without action is merely a thought. It's vital to implement your decision promptly to achieve the desired outcome. Cultivating the ability to make informed decisions quickly isn't an overnight process. However, with practice and patience, you'll find that this skill becomes second nature, enabling you to stay calm, think clearly, and win every time. Chapter 24. Improve your critical thinking skills. To improve your critical thinking skills, it's crucial to challenge the way you currently think. Don't accept things at face value and always question the status quo. If you're always comfortable with your thoughts and conclusions, then you're not stretching your mind enough. Critical thinking is about being analytical and insightful, not just about being smart. It involves analyzing information from various angles, comparing different viewpoints, and considering possible outcomes. You should be open to new ideas and willing to change your mind if the evidence supports it. Engage in activities that demand cognitive effort. Read books that make you think, solve challenging puzzles, or take up hobbies that require strategic planning. These activities train your brain to think critically and help you become more adept at problem solving. Don't jump to conclusions or make hasty decisions. Instead, take your time to gather all the necessary information, scrutinize it thoroughly, and then make an informed decision. Remember, good critical thinkers aren't impulsive, but reflective and deliberate. Develop a habit of self-reflection. Regularly analyze your thought processes and decisions. Ask yourself what worked, what didn't, and why. This self-evaluation will help you understand your thinking patterns, identify areas for improvement, and develop better strategies for the future. Lastly, maintain an open mind. Be humble and accept that you don't know everything. There's always something new to learn, and every situation can be a learning opportunity. Keep seeking knowledge, stay curious, and your critical thinking skills will keep improving. Chapter 25. Apply Critical Thinking in Life. Applying critical thinking to your life isn't just a mental exercise, it's a practical tool. It's the key to making informed decisions and solving everyday problems effectively. Start questioning your assumptions, evaluate evidence objectively, and you'll see the difference it makes in your life. Critical thinking is your secret weapon when it comes to making informed decisions. It's not just about having the most information, but knowing how to sift through it to find what's most relevant to your situation. Your ability to remain calm and analytical is key to this process. First, identify and clearly define the problem at hand. This gives you a focused lens through which you can view your information. Next, gather as much relevant data as you can. Use reliable sources and verify the information where possible.
Remember, quality trumps quantity. Then, evaluate the information critically. Look for any biases, consider the source, and weigh the evidence. This is where your critical thinking skills really shine. They allow you to separate fact from opinion and valuable insights from mere noise. Lastly, make your decision based on this informed analysis. Don't rush it, but don't procrastinate either. It's a balance between thoughtful consideration and decisive action. Keep in perspective, even the most informed decisions carry some risk, but with critical thinking, you're better equipped to manage it. Everyday life throws various problems at you, some simple, others complex. You've got to apply critical thinking skills to navigate these challenges successfully. When faced with a problem, don't get flustered. Instead, take a deep breath and stay calm. Remember, panic can cloud your judgment. Next, clearly define the issue at hand. What exactly is the problem? Can you articulate it in a sentence or two? Clarity is vital at this stage. Now, gather information. What do you already know about the problem? What more do you need to know? Don't rush this part. Collecting data is fundamental to making an informed decision. Analyze the information you've collected. Look for patterns, connections, or discrepancies. Ask yourself, what does this mean this step is where the magic happens? This is where you'll start to see potential solutions emerge. Finally, evaluate the options. Which solution is the most feasible? Which aligns best with your values, goals, and resources? Choose the best option, then act on it. In the whirlwind of life, mastering critical thinking can be your anchor. Recognize when pressure mounts, then breathe, step back, and calm your racing heart. Question assumptions, cut through biases, and focus on facts, not emotions. Ask probing questions to guarantee well-rounded viewpoints. Remember, high stress can blur clarity, but staying calm can bring it back into focus. Make quick, informed decisions and continually sharpen your critical thinking skills. Life's a game, play it well. Stay calm, think clearly, and win every time. Thanks for listening to or reading this from Audiobooks Office.